So we're talking about contrast because it affects just about every single part of your image from the whites to the highlights to the shadows to the blacks. It affects colors and color saturation. It's possibly the most important step in processing your photos and video. Now there are a few ways to create contrast in your images and some of them are better than others. And today I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. Now, before we start to all of you subscribers, thank you. I'm super thankful for all of your support and I can't believe how fast we're growing. And if you're new here, we're all about making photography simple. So hit that subscribe button, you won't be sorry. So you're just back from a shoot and you've got your raw files ready to be loaded up and you're super excited to see them. But when you put them into Lightroom and you take a peek, you realize they look terrible. They're washed out, they're flat, they're boring. They look so bad that you don't even know where to start. I mean, how do you get those rich, full colors and that deep, smooth contrast? Well, it turns out it's pretty simple if you just know a few things and you do it the right way. Let me show you. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. Some of you may recognize this photo as you've seen me out at the Valley of Fire before. And you can see that I've done my first five steps, which usually takes me less than 30 seconds. And I do it on every single photo. In fact, I did a whole video about that and I'll link it below. If you haven't seen it, you can check it out. But there are just five things I do here that set the photo up for full processing. Okay, so next up is contrast. You can see the photo is super flat and boring and it's even a little underexposed. It was a super windy day out here. You can see the clouds up here and I was balanced up on the rocks up here with my tripod. The wind was blowing so hard that I couldn't even keep the tripod steady. So, and I think I had the exposure at one two hundredth of a second. And that was about as slow of an exposure I could take without introducing camera shake. So you can see here that the histogram is just a little bit underexposed for my taste. I would rather it have been a little bit more exposed. Okay, so I have a couple of choices here. I could either just push up the exposure until it's almost blown out, but not quite, and then push up that contrast until it's at a point where it looks like the photo has some good detail in it. And that looks pretty good. I mean, we've got this tiny little blowout here, but the problem is when you do that, you are adding contrast to the entire image and it's forcing you to push the exposure up in order to keep these dark areas from being completely lost in the image. So it looks fine, but your sky is almost lost here. And so your detail is gone because you've had to push up the exposure in order to compensate. And so you remember the histogram, if you look at our highlights here and our whites, everything is pushed all the way to the right, which means that that sky is just completely destroyed. And we'd have to do some gradient filters. And if you don't know much about the histogram, I also did a video about that and I'll link that below. You'll learn a ton about what it means and how to use it to help you get proper exposure. What I like to do instead, back to the original, is I like to pull down my highlights, okay, about there and then push up the shadows. And since it was such a dark exposure, I'll push these all the way up. And then I'll push up my whites. And you can see what's happening there in the histogram. Push these up to about 24, 25, and we're still not clipped. And then I'll pull down these blacks and I can go way down with these because what I can then do is push up the exposure to there. And I'll pull down these whites just a little bit to recover that highlight detail. And so we've pulled down our highlights all the way and our shadows are all the way up. Now, I don't do that with every photo. This is just an extreme example because of the situation. But you can see that this produces a whole lot more contrast and you still retain all that detail in the sky. And look at what it does to the colors. It keeps them rich and they're deep and full. And in fact, this even looks a little bit oversaturated and that's what adding contrast does. It really does affect your color. So what I will do is I'll pull down the saturation a little bit to maybe there and I'll push up the vibrance. And the reason I'm pushing up the vibrance is that when you move your highlights and shadows, you're effectively pushing the histogram back to the center of the exposure. And then as I move my whites and blacks, I'm really adding contrast to the entire photo, which affects the saturation of the entire photo. So I can pull the saturation of the entire photo down and then the vibrance that affects the saturation of the midtones. And so because we have taken out the detail in the midtones, I'm pushing that vibrance back up. Now this looks much more like it did when I was standing there as far as colors go compared to this, 
which is a little bit funky to me. Now I could also do the thing where I pull down the saturation and I push up the vibrance, but we still have lost the sky. So if you look at this, compared to this, you can see I've got the detail in the sky, I've got better detail in all of the rocks and in the foreground, and it just is a much better approach to adding contrast to your photo. Now the second step I'll do to even add a little bit more is I go down to the tone curve. Now you've heard me talk about the curves before, what this is, is it's kind of a micro adjustment of these same values here. So you're affecting the histogram, you're affecting it the same way. It's just in a little bit of a micro adjustment. And so the corresponding values are actually the highlights are like the whites, the lights are like the highlights, the darks are like the shadows, and the shadows are like the blacks. And so if you pull down the shadows, you can see it's pulling down the blacks. If you pull down the darks, you can see it's pulling down the shadows, okay? So it's a little bit confusing, but that's the terminology and that's the way the tone curve works. So if we just use the point graph in order to make our adjustment, what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of highlights and then add a little bit of shadow and you can see how much saturation that's creating and how much contrast that's creating. That's a little bit too much. So it, it's a pretty delicate adjustment, just a tiny little S curve. So this would be an exaggerated S, but you can see that the shape of the S. And then this is just a tiny little S curve in order to introduce just a little bit more micro adjustment and micro contrast to the photo. And that's it. That is my entire contrast adjustment that I will do before I start editing the photo for colors and before I start working on the sky to bring out some more detail there. But that's how I get my first major step. And you can see the difference between that and where we started from. That's where we are now. And that's where we started from. And then to add some contrast to the sky, I would just take a radial filter, make it large enough and the right shape to capture that sky. And this is pretty rough, but you'll get an idea of what I mean here. And then invert it and then do the same sort of thing where I pull down the highlights, push up the shadows, push up the whites, maybe bring down that exposure a little bit, bring down the blacks, push up the whites. I'll just do this back and forth until I get it to where I want it to be. And you can see here without the filter, with the filter, right? If I make sure that I feather it enough, it won't affect these rocks either. So you can see that they're not really moving. And I would do this a little bit more carefully if I was going to process this photo fully, but that's kind of the idea and you can see what I mean. And so then we started with this and we're here. So we went from here to here and that's it. Okay, it's as simple as that. If you want to know how to do the same thing on Snapseed, I'm going to be doing a video tutorial on Instagram soon. So if you're not following me yet over there, I'll put a link below. Also, let me know in the comments what other types of processing questions you have and what you'd like to see me do a video on. Okay, I hope that helped. And if you feel like it did, please hit that like button as that definitely helps. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that little notification bell to stay in the loop around here. And I'll see you in the next video.